Good morning. Well, I've been blessed by these reports. The reports that have been given, have they been lovely? What the Lord is doing and the hard work? <laughs> God is good. <clears throat> you know, this coming Monday, my wife and myself, um, it's going to be a special day for us. 51 years of marriage. We're going to be... <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so we're going to celebrate. <laughs> we're just so grateful to God for how he's led us these years. We've, uh, my wife tells me, you know, I married a teacher. I was a school teacher. And, uh, but she is very happy after we've been doing 51 years, 50 years of ministry. And it's been a blessing. God has been good. <clears throat> so we're very thankful very thankful to God for the years he's given us together. And so, and the children, grandchildren, it's just been wonderful. <clears throat> so um, this morning, what I want to do, I want to um, share with you, I think the title's up here, When Temptation Strikes. <clears throat> when Temptation Strikes. We're going to learn a little bit, uh, bit this morning about the nature, the nature of temptation. And I want to start off with a story. <clears throat> Men who trap uh, animals in Africa for, for zoos here in America, they say that the hardest <clears throat> animal to trap, to catch, is a ringtail monkey. <clears throat> but the uh, Sulus, the Sulu tribe from Africa, um, <clears throat> for them it's simple. They've been doing this for many years. And so they develop a method, a method of being able to trap these animals. <clears throat> and it has to do with their understanding of the animal. The way they trap them is that they take a melon, often I take a melon, and what they do, <clears throat> they put a little hole, a small hole in the melon. <clears throat> now inside that melon is their favorite food, Seeds. They just love these seeds. So what the um, ringtail monkey does, he sticks his hand and grabs a lot of seeds. And then when he tries to pull his hand back out, he can't because the hole has made just enough room for his hand to go in. So he tries to pull, and you know he'll do that for hours, trying to all he has to do is let go of the seeds, let go of the seeds, <clears throat> easily his hand will get, come out. But he won't do that. You know, he'll struggle, he'll fight, he'll screech. <clears throat> and you know what the uh, Zulus do? What they do, they kind of sneak behind him. They sneak in and they nab, nab him. <clears throat> so that's what they do. That's how they, uh, I read this story, I thought it was interesting, um, how they trap these um, agile monkeys. So likewise, you know, unhealth, unhealthy habits that we form through life, they trap us. And we love them. Some of these habits have been long forming. And so we try to get away. You know, God wants the best for us. He wants us to be free. And so we're going to learn this morning <clears throat> that, you know, there's some struggles that we all, every one of us, struggles with. And that struggle is in the area of temptation. What? Temptation. So today we're going to look at temptation in general. Uh, we're going to look at the sources of temptation. Where does temptation come from? What are the sources of temptation? And what does the devil strike us? Where, where is it? Where, where does this hit us? And also we're going to look at the safeguards. <clears throat> the safeguards, how to deal successfully with temptation. So let us begin by looking at what the Bible says. What the Bible says about temptation. How to overcome, how to be successful. So we must learn what the Bible teaches about the nature of temptation, which we all face. We all are tempted. 
So we're going to look at some of the truths that help us to understand when temptation strikes. <clears throat> temptation, by the way, is a normal part of life. Did you know that? It's a normal part of hu being human and living in a fallen world. So, you know, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when, um, or shocked or discouraged when you're tempted. Be realistic about the, you know, it's unavoidable, inevitable. You know, it'll, temptation will hit us. We can never avoid it, and we're going to see why. So um, you can run, but you can't hide from temptation. Um, in fact, um, it doesn't follow you. It's there already when you get there, when you arrive. And it doesn't matter if you're a sinner or a saint. You're going to be tempted. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Sometimes we think, you know, as we get older, we're not going to be tempted anymore. No. It doesn't matter if you're young, you're old. What your age is, you will be tempted. And it doesn't matter if you've been a um, Christian or are serving the Lord for 50 years or 50 minutes. You're going to be tempted. We never outgrow temptation. Let's look at what the book of James on this topic. It says this, James 1.14. It says, but each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. The Bible clearly states that every one of us, everyone is tempted. Even Jesus was tempted when he was here on earth. And we're going to look at that right now. We're going to Hebrews 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in what? Tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without what? Without sin. You know, Jesus was tempted in three areas that we get tempted in. Jesus was tempted on appetite. <clears throat> in Matthew uh, chapter 4, we find that Jesus was led to the wilderness. For 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And so um, the devil comes around and says, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into what? Bread. Now, he took his orders from God. He was faithful to God. You know, we're tempted in the area of appetite. You know, I found as I was reading, that I was studying so many things. You know, they, they spring from appetite, the lust of the flesh. So many things. We're going to look a little deeper. But, you know, they spring out of appetite. So, you know, uh, Jesus was also tempted he was tempted on presumption. It says that the devil took him to the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down. He'll send his angels. You won't even dash your foot upon the ground. He'll send his angels. Did you know that the devil was actually, he was actually quoting Psalm 91, 12. Devil knows, he knows the Bible. And so he was being tempted. By the way, presumption is a false faith. It's a false thinking that we could get away with some things because we're Christians. You know, for example, driving 100 miles an hour on a 65-mile zone going to church or to a Christian concert, so God's going to uh, deliver, going to take care of me. No, we can't live dangerously. <clears throat> Or getting into a compromising situation, you know, with someone and thinking, you know, I'm a Christian. God's going to deliver me if by being a Christian. No, that's, that's presumption. No, not at all. What else was he tempted on? He was tempted on the love of the world. 
He said to him in Matthew 4, 4, <clears throat> all this that you see, all the bright lights, the world will be yours if you worship me. <clears throat> he said, no, you know, worship the Lord your God, him only. But you know what? So many people, young people especially, or it doesn't matter, the lights, you know, think there's something better out there. You know, leaving the church for something better, for something worse. You know, I was in um, Korea some, some time ago, and um, I went to the demilitarized zone in Korea, and I was able to cross into North Korea <clears throat> through a building. And um, not far from the from the um, demilitarized zone, there's a city. It's called Propaganda City. It was built in 1950, and it's a city that you know you hear music, you would hear music, laughter, people having a great time in that city, trying to draw people over there. And you know what? Nobody lived in that city. It was a city to trap people, to try to get people to go there and find a good time, enjoy themselves. And what they found out was that it was a facade. Some of those buildings just had a, there was nothing there. <clears throat> then they noticed that the lights all went on almost all at the same time. You know, the devil tries to allure us, tries to get us out there, thinking there's something better out there for you. There isn't. So, you know, the devil is working hard. Now, the enemy tries to attempt to allure us like they were trying in that city. But the case, you know what's important for us to realize? It's important for us to realize that <clears throat> it's not a sin. Listen carefully. It's not a sin to be tempted. No, we've seen already that Jesus was tempted. <clears throat> Yet he never sinned. Temptation comes only, becomes, temp, becomes sin when we give in to it. I was reading um, a, Morris Venden. He did a study on temptation. He's been looking at different sources. He says we're tempted, we consider, we consent, we plan, and we act. When does it become temptation? When does it become sin? Is it sin to be tempted? No, because we just said, you know, everybody gets tempted. So, but, you know, a lot of young people think when they get a bad thought, they get a temptation, they think that's sin. Temptation is not sin. We're going to get striked. We're going to get bombarded. <laughs> the devil throws everything at us. So, temptation is not sin. Is it sin to consider? <clears throat> to consider whether you do it or not, is that sin? When the temptation comes to you to do something against God's will, to consider it, is that sin? No, but you can't spend much time there. That's when the choosing comes in. Will I go that way or that way? Now, what about when you consent? When you consent to do it, but you don't do it, is that sin? It's sin when you consent. When you say, I'm, you know, in other words, that's when you get in the soup. <laughs> when you consent, probably the reason you didn't do it was because you didn't get the chance. So temptation, it becomes sin when you consent. Well, we consent to do something. And so we need to be careful here. Uh, but um, I like what Martin Luther, the great reformer, said. He said this. Temptations, of course, cannot be avoided. But because we cannot prevent the birds from flying over our heads, there is no need that we should let them nest in our hair. In other words, we can't avoid birds flying over our head, but we can avoid them making a little nest up there. Huh? Actually, you know what I found? We grow closer to God. As we grow closer to God, the devil targets us. He wants Christians. He wants to knock us. He has some of the others already. But we need to acknowledge that as Christians, we're going to be tempted. He wants to bring us down. 
So now I want to move into another area. I mentioned that um, <clears throat> we're going to look at the sources of temptation. This is important. What are the sources? In other words, where does, where does uh, temptation spring from? And what are these sources? <clears throat> the Bible teaches that they're sources of temptation. One source is from within. Did you know that? One source of temptation is from within. The others, others are from without. And we're going to look at that. Sources from within. Within, we are tempted from our carnal nature. Every person has a carnal nature. We're all born like that. <clears throat> we inherit this carnal nature that we live with from our first parents from Adam. The Bible says, talking about where we inherited this, Romans 5.12, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man. Who was that one man? Adam. <clears throat> it's all about self. It's all about me. It's all about I. Now, James 1.14 says, each one is tempted when by his own evil desire, his own what? Evil desire. <clears throat> we, he is dragged away and enticed. So the carnal nature of temptation comes from where? From within. Where does it come from? From within. Let's look again at Mark. Mark 7, 21, 23. From within, out of men's hearts, comes evil thoughts sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man what? Unclean. <clears throat> That's one source of temptation from within us, from our carnal nature. Another source of temptation <clears throat> And we saw it already as the love of the world. And that's from the outside. Temptation comes from the outside. It, it could be the drive, the drive for riches, for fame, for fortune. A lot of people, you know, they're driven out there, you know, to do something, to make something. Things that, are, that could separate us from God. <clears throat> so we need to be careful there. John says... In 1 John 2.15, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of God is not in him. These are the things in the world that separate us from God. We can't leave the world. Those things that hurt us, that harm us. Now, <clears throat> the things of the world separate us from God. What's another source of temptation? We're told evil spirits. What? evil spirits, and we are tempted from the outside by the devil and his demons, evil spirits. You know, there's millions and millions of demons. A third of the angels came down with Satan. They're all over the place. Now, Ephesians 6, 12 says, our struggle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil <clears throat> in heavenly realms. So it's important, you know, to realize that the sources are what? From within and from what? Without. Now, it's also important to know, <clears throat> like I mentioned earlier, where temptation strikes. So where is the battle? Where is the battle for good and evil fought? Where is that fought, that battle for good and evil? Is it out there somewhere? You know what? It's in the mind. It's in the mind. The battlefield is the mind. <clears throat> Let's look at the arena of the battlefield of temptation. It's a mental battle. So often we think it's out there somewhere, you know, a spiritual realm somewhere. No. The vast majority of spiritual warfare is right now taking place in the hearts and minds of people. That's where it's taking place. And so, what are we encouraged to do? 
We're encouraged in Romans 12 too, <clears throat> do not conform. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When you, <clears throat> then you will be a, able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, we're going to move now to the safeguards. How can we successfully fight with the devil and win? Let's look at the safeguards. We're going to look at several, okay? And they're not of this world, but they're important. We need to ask God for help. When you're tempted, when the temptation comes to you, we need to ask God for help through prayer. Heaven has a 24-hour emergency hotline. A 24-hour, God wants you to ask for help in overcoming temptations. He says in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15, call on me in times of trouble. I will rescue you and you will honor me. Yes, we need to call upon him. When temptation strikes, you don't have time for long prayers, okay? You have to go right to the point. You need to go right, SOS, man, get right to it. God, help me with this. Because some people want to go and think they have to do a big old prayer. No. <clears throat> the Bible guarantees that our cry for help will be heard because Jesus is sympathetic with our struggles. He sees what you're going through. He knows what we're going through. And so when we call to him, you know, he faced these temptations himself. So he knows how to help us. <clears throat> God is waiting to help us and defeat temptation. You know, why don't we go to him more often when we're tempted? You know, he wants us. <clears throat> God never gets tired of, of listening to our calls, our prayers. He's not bored, impatient if we keep going back to him because we're going to get hit left and right. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, 16, this should be encouraging. <clears throat> Let us have what? Confidence then and approach God's throne where there is grace. There we will receive mercy and find grace to help us just when we need it. Beautiful. God's love is everlasting. Yes. And he has patience, the Bible tells us, endures for how long? Forever. If you have to cry to God for help 100 times for a particular sin a day, you know what? The Bible tells us God is still eager to help you. Do you know that? You could call upon him a hundred times. You're struggling with something. He's eager to help you. So we are invited to come to the throne of grace boldly. That means, because you know why? Because the devil's trying to put traps. He wants to keep us from coming to God. But God says, come. <clears throat> you know, key, uh, temptation keeps us dependent upon God. Yes. You know, just like I put, wrote a little note here. Just as the roots grow strong when wind blows against the tree. So every time you stand up to temptation, becomes stronger in Christ. Now, when you stumble, which you will at times, it's not fatal. Instead of giving up, giving up, look to God. That's why we have prayer. Expect him to help you, and he will. The Bible tells us he'll always put it a way out. He'll help us have a way out. It says in um, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. <clears throat> What's he saying here? In other words, temptation will... 
will not be allowed to crush us, but to strengthen us. So when people are tempted and remain strong, you know, trusting in God, he will reward us. He will reward us in this life and the life to come. Okay, so the first one, safeguard, is prayer. All right? Second safeguard, it says, in the battle against temptation, the second uh, safeguard is guard your senses. Guard what? Your senses. You know, it's unnatural, really. It's unnatural for our nature to do what is right. You know that little song that they sing in Sabbath school? I don't know if they still sing it. That little song that says, Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. We need to guard our senses. These are the avenues to the soul. Our senses are the avenues to the soul. So how do we guard our senses? Matthew 26, 41. Let's look up there. Watch and what? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And Galatians 5, 16. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. Yes, you know, and Evan is home, page 401. Satan gains entrance to the soul. This is on these texts here, by the way. Satan gains entrance to the soul. All should guard the senses, lest Satan gain victory over them, for these are the avenues to the soul. You know, the devil has all sorts of things out there for you, for me, for every one of us. The media, pornography, it's all out there. We got to guard what we see. We got to be careful what we look at, what we read, what we see, what the senses. We need to be careful. Yes. Okay, let's look at another safeguard in the battle against temptation. We've looked at prayer. We've looked at guarding our senses. Another one is taking time. And this is that easy, taking time with God's word, the Bible. Jesus responded to every temptation that the devil threw at him. It is written with the Bible. We need to know our Bibles. Yes. <clears throat> the battle is only, is only, will only be won when we use the spiritual weapons found in God's word. By knowing the word of God. Jesus knew the word of God. Knowing the word of God and claiming promises of the word of God. Yes, we need to claim promises. We can arm ourselves when temptation strikes. If we get to know the word, we need to take time reading and studying the Bible regularly, okay? Regularly. You know, we need to take time with the Bible. It's essential for strengthening us. It strengthens us in our spiritual life and helps us to resist temptation. We need to know the word of God. Memorize key promises. Memorize key verses that relate to the areas of temptation where we're being tempted. Now, for ex there's some beautiful promises. For example, when you're tempted, for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, you know, negative thinking, when you're tempted there, what, what promise can you claim when you're getting bombarded with dirty thoughts or bad thoughts or unhealthy thoughts, unloving thoughts? What can you do? What they come into the mind? Here's a beautiful, tem a beautiful promise. 2 Corinthians 10.5. Casting down imaginations and everything that everything that, it, let me just get back to the verse here. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself above the knowledge of God 
and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Claim their promise. When you're getting bombarded with all kinds of thoughts that are unloving, uncaring, whatever the thought may be, that's a beautiful promise, casting down imaginations. Yes, and every high thing that exalted itself above the knowledge of God and bringing, it says, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Now, another one that's out there, another big temptation that's out there that hit, hits us and hits many people, you know what it is? Covetousness, it, which is part of it. The Tenth Commandment talks about covetousness. You need to find a promise for when you get, start coveting, wandering eyes. When you start covering, coveting what belongs to somebody else, it could be a person, it could be someone's a car, it could be a house, like the, like the commandment says. When we start coveting, what promise is out there? Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. <clears throat> Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content. Be content with whatsoever things you have. We need to be what? Content with whatsoever things we have. It says, be content with whatsoever things you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do unto me. This is a beautiful promise for covetousness. You know, it says, I am your helper. I will help you through that. In closing, I just want to say this. Just a, a review. This is a review. When temptation strikes, remember that temptation is not sin. When temptation strikes, remember the sources of temptation from within and from without. We looked at three. When temptation strikes, remember the place of the battle is where? The mind. So we got to fortify our mind with the word of God. And remember, <clears throat> when temptation strikes, the safeguard and the victory is possible through Jesus Christ. He is the one that can help us. We need to, every day, ask for that fresh time, fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, <clears throat> this topic had so much that next Sabbath we will look at some of the additional practical steps you can take to, to overcome temptation. Try to be here next week. We're going to get into some really important helps. <clears throat> so I want to thank God. We have a loving God, right? Caring God. It cares for us. So let us come to him. Keep Christ first in your life. God bless you.